Today I'm going to share what the GI Map stool test is and when it's most useful, so stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Amanda Malachewski. I'm a certified functional nutrition health coach and a digestive and allergy detective. For help creating your own personalized calm digestion plan, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. Stool testing, like the GI map, can be a distracting shiny object if you don't know how to, how or when to use it properly. So by the end of today's video, you'll understand what the test is and whether or not right now might be a good time for you to actually invest in it. I teach this decision-making process to the students inside my Calm Digestion program, and this could be helpful for you too, so let's get started. Okay, so the GI MAP stool test is a quantitative DNA PCR test offered by Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory. Using a single stool sample collected at home, the test looks for over 60 microorganisms, including pathogens, parasites, um, bacteria, beneficial bacteria, and yeasts, as well as giving you a panel of digestive health markers, which sometimes are really valuable clues in your quest to understand what's going on in your gut. And one of the extremely valuable things that the GI map gives you is quantitative results. So instead of just saying, yes, you have this, or no, you don't, they give you a quantitative value indicating how prevalent that organism is. And so this can give you an idea of how severe the infestation is with whatever it is you're looking at. Last year, I had the opportunity to compare the GI map with other similar stool tests that are often offered in doctor's offices. And typically these other tests are also DNA PCR tests, but they usually only test for a panel of about 12 or so of the most common infections, things like C. difficile and Giardia. And the other thing that's different about these other tests is that they typically either just give you a yes or a no. And there's some kind of cutoff amount where if your infection is below a certain limit, the machine that does the testing doesn't detect it and turns you up negative, even though you might have some kind of infection still. And this could be important, especially with an organism like C. difficile, where even very small quantities of this organism can still cause symptoms. Lots of clients come into my practice telling me that they have already had a stool test, which came up negative, but usually it's one of these um, pared down tests that only has about 12 markers on them. And this is one reason why I like to use the GI map in practice is because it can give us a much more comprehensive picture of what's going on in your gut and may turn, not always, but it may turn up some things that are valuable clues for helping us understand why your symptoms are persisting and won't go away. But should you run a GI map stool test? There's a couple of other considerations that are important to think about before you decide to go ahead. So number one is that the test is actually pretty expensive if you're paying for it out of pocket. It's 359 US dollars for the regular GI map and there are a couple of add-ons that can add a little bit to that cost. And a lot of conventional doctors won't order it or don't have an account or don't know how to have an account or even if they had access, they don't know how to read it and so they're hesitant to prescribe it. So if you're not able to access this test through your physician or naturopath or other license, <clears throat> licensed provider where you can actually try and get insurance coverage, you're going to have to pay out of pocket. So you better well um, be sure that the test is going to be valuable for you before you spend that kind of money. So here are a couple of situations where I think it's worth it. So the first situation where I think it's really valuable is if you have already done extensive work trying to shift your diet, working on supporting your digestive function. You've already thoroughly trialed things like probiotics, digestive enzymes, and other recommended treatments from your doctor or gastroenterologist or naturopath, and you still have persistent digestive symptoms, bloating, gas, nausea, um, diarrhea, constipation, etc. This would be a reason that the GI map might be really valuable for you. And the reason I say this is that we have to address the low hanging fruit first. These are the things that you have control over and can make a really big difference if done properly. The diet, the lifestyle practices, stress relief, um, and you know the right kind of supplementation used properly can and does make a really big difference with these situations in a lot of cases. So um, if you feel like you've exhausted all of those options and you still have symptoms, that would be a great reason to run the GI map. 
The second situation would be if you are working with a doctor and you've run one of these more limited PCR DNA tests that are pretty limited in their scope and you still think you really have an infection or your doctor has said it sort of looks like you have an infection but we didn't find anything that would be another reason to utilize the GI map. And third, if you have heartburn, ulcers, or reflux, and you are interested in finding out about your H. pylori status, this would be yet another reason to run the GI map. The GI map not only tests for H. pylori, but it also tests for what's called virulence factors. So it kind of looks for certain particular varieties of H. pylori that are known to be more pathogenic, more resistant to treatment, and more of a pain in the neck. <laughs> and so um, having that information is really, really valuable on your gut health journey. And finally, one more thing to think about before deciding to run the GI map is do you have someone who can help you adequately interpret the test? The test needs to be read with a little bit of nuance because it can present you with results like, oh, you have dysbiosis or you have low beneficial bacteria. And you need a strategic approach that's comprehensive to move forward with that information because it's really easy to fall into the trap of thinking, oh, I have this, I need to treat that. I have this, I need to treat it. Um, you know, for example, like I have H. pylori and candida, so I have to treat those things with uh, an antibiotic and an antifungal. And that's not necessarily the case. It might be, but it might not be either. There's a lot more to know about sequencing your solutions and choosing the right approaches for you based on what's already going on, what's worked previously, and where you're trying to get to. And I only say this because I've noticed a lot of people who get their GI map results but don't have good help working through what the results mean for them often get more anxious and overwhelmed by what's going on in their gut because now they think they have this terrible infection that's gonna prevent them from ever, ever getting better or they're really not sure how to move forward and how to work with that information. So before diving in to order a GI map, however you have access to it, please make sure that you have a, a knowledgeable practitioner that can help you interpret the results and help you strategize what to do once you get those results. I'm curious to know what are you interested to know about from a GI map test for yourself? Tell me about it in the comments. So if you're struggling with not knowing how to use the various gut diets, supplements, and protocols you might've been given after receiving GI map test results, I can help. I help people who are frustrated or struggling with their gut healing diets and supplement protocols go from anxiety, endless questions, and second guessing to a confident plan for calm digestion. And right now I am taking a limited number of private clients through the fall. If this sounds like something you need help with, I encourage you to head over to my website at confluencenutrition.com forward slash contact and you can fill out a brief application for a slot in my practice and you'll also choose a time to meet with me to talk about that. I'll look forward to meeting you to find out how I can help get you feeling better. In the meantime, I hope that this video helped you understand when to best use the GI map stool test and when maybe you don't need to. If you like this video, please like, uh, subscribe, and maybe share it with someone who could use it. And I look forward to talking with you another time.